speak. For providing maintenance services to the hospitals, including this one, all the hospitals in the province. And uh, I just want to confirm that, yes, indeed, as the department, we have appointed a contractor on site. And we'll tell you the name. The name is uh, Tanzanani um, Trading uh, Enterprises. That's the company that was appointed to do the waterproofing because this building had a problem of water leakages. This was quite a serious problem that needed to be attended to. And uh, the contractor was appointed to do waterproofing. Now, because of the, the hospital has been built um, some years ago, the construction technology that was used here is such that there, was, um, there were uh, concrete stones on top, which uh, the contractor felt uh, that in order for them to do their work uh, of waterproofing, they felt they needed to remove the concrete stones. And the manner in which they removed them is uh, they actually pulled them, put them on a side, which is basically on top of the structure as you sit here. And because of the, um, the weight of the concrete stones, it then uh, overweighted on the roof and then it collapsed. What we have observed just from um, you know, our preliminary observation is that we could clearly see <coughs> that uh, the structure uh, on which the contractor was working and the way they were pulling the, removing the concrete stones, uh, they, we could see that they did not do a proper check on the strength of the building or the roof itself to carry the, 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 to carry the stones that they had put on site. We don't think that there was a preliminary check of the capacity and structure of the building to carry that weight, and that's why it collapsed. And we also verified and checked that uh, when they were doing the work, working, uh, working on top, it doesn't appear that uh, they had warned or put um, safety signs to alert people passing by that uh, you know they were working on, on the roof of that nature, which was not strong enough, and it could have over, you know, fell because of the weight of the concrete stones. And uh, so we have made a determination that um, it is very clear that the contractor, the manner in which they worked, they need to be held accountable for the way in which they approach the work, because certainly they could have taken measures to make sure that uh, what we're sitting with did not happen. So we, we have taken a decision to remove them off-site with immediate effect. Um, right tonight we are going to inform them that uh, they have to be to move off site because we don't think their continued stay here <clears throat> will give us the i mean doesn't give us the confidence that the next job they are going to do will not bring any risk to the members of the public staff including themselves so we'll remove them off site with immediate effect we are definitely going to hold them accountable and answerable to the questions that i've already raised how come that they could do this without making a predetermined check on whether uh, you know the building was strong enough to carry the concrete stones so we will definitely take them to task on that they've got a case to answer we can already see preliminarily and we are not going to leave any stone unturned we are going to take action and already with removing them on site i think you can clearly see that our determination to hold them accountable then we'll conduct further investigations on any other related matter on the contractor. But clearly, tonight, we're removing them off site, and then we'll announce further steps tomorrow and as we move forward. Okay. Well, uh, yeah, I think the two MECs have briefed you very well. Sure. Me and the Premier will take questions, but I just want to emphasize what the MEC was saying, because I also don't like what I've seen. The contractor was given a job which I regard as very simple. Sealing a leaking roof. Waterproofing is a very simple job. I've seen it being done before. He then found concrete which has been there from the 70s when, when they were using it to block ultraviolet. It's the technology that was used in the past. That's why the concrete was there. It was not there by accident. He then decides to remove it. And in removing it, he takes to, to another part of the hospital on a slab that is very thin and it's not reinforced there's no reinforcement on that slab is very thin i don't think even it will even take the weight of human beings if they were to walk 
but it's in the part of the hospital where nobody has to walk. There's nobody. It was not intended for any weight. I think any weight that we put there will, will definitely collapse. I'm not an engineer, I'm not a structural engineer. Just by looking with my own eyes, my common sense will tell me that you can't put anything here. And that it was not even the part of the hospital where you are supposed to work make, makes me even more angrier, you know, uh, and, and that's why I'm happy. Uh, and commend the MEC for removing them on site immediately. Because in my understanding, he would have said, you gave me a job to seal here, that's the only thing I know. I found some concrete there, I want it removed. Can you hire somebody who is skilled and trained in that type of a thing? Then this disaster will not have happened, this accident will not have happened. But we're happy that all the patients have been seen. I try to practice my old trade by looking at the x-rays myself. Even though the experts look at them and I'm satisfied, nobody, at, at least the ones we have seen up to so far, we're just waiting for the x-ray from the lady who was not in the side. She just had screams and she took her back. She was trying to run away in another part of the hospital when she had people scream, screaming and, and she twisted her, her ankle. So we're waiting for an x-ray to see if there's any injury there. Thank you. Well, uh, firstly, I think uh, <coughs> the minister and I arrived after the two MECs have been on site for quite some time. And our immediate concern was uh, to go and check the patients who were injured, uh, which we did. Uh, we found that uh, two of them had already been discharged. Uh, we were able to talk to some of them uh, to ascertain that uh, uh, the minor injuries that they have suffered uh, are being attended to by the doctors uh, and certainly our immediate focus now is uh, on the contractor. It doesn't make sense to me why a contractor would have put, uh, after removing the rubble from wherever they were sealing, they would have put it uh, on that roof there which uh, has no uh, reinforcement. So that's, that's the critical thing. Uh, we are also assured that uh, the Department of Labor inspectors are here. When you have any construction accident uh, in, an, in a place uh, where there are people, uh, the, the Department of Labor is our first port of call. They are here on site. Uh, they are also doing inspections. And uh, we will get a, a, a report uh, immediately. Uh, our immediate concern is to ensure there's no disruption of hospital services at the moment and uh, that's why we're here. We're going to continue to uh, await uh, the report from the emergency services uh, that, uh, and we hope uh, everything is fine even in the work that they are undertaking right now. Uh, certainly we, we're going to make sure that uh, uh, the, the contractor who has been appointed by the Department of Infrastructure De uh, Development uh, uh, gives us the, the answers that we need. Why would you put rubble on, on the, that part of the roof uh, that can't carry anything heavy of that, uh, of that sort? Okay, guys, can we take questions? Okay, a few. I'm taking a few. One, no. two, three. Okay. Malung Yelopoe from ANCA. I just want to get a sense how many construction workers were working at the time and have they all been accounted for. And my second question is for the NEC of Infrastructure, uh, Mr. Mawabolo. Uh, sh surely, sir, somebody should have came here and, 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 and saw that this company was actually putting the people's lives here in danger. Wasn't that done? Didn't anyone come and check how this company worked? And whether were there, does this company actually have any experience to start with? Let me see Mama Bolo will check it, okay? No, we'll come back to you. Okay, let me see, let me see Mama Bolo. Okay, can I answer the question? Yes. yes. Okay. Let me say that, uh, yes, indeed, uh, the workers that, uh, there were about two workers that uh, were reported to us as uh, being uh, affected, and those workers were subsequently released, they've gone home. So. From where we are sitting now, although they are still uh, clearing the rubble, but the report we have now is that all workers have been accounted for. Now, with respect to how we work on um, construction sites like this one, is that as a department, we have what we call a resident engineer on site. 
that that we that that takes care of all the work that we do here and of course um, he has given us the brief but we will also have to check when we do the further investigations to check uh, how what did they see and all that remember that uh, what we're talking now is preliminary observations so we'll still have to go to the bottom of the facts and to check all sides so um, the the other thing is that uh, whether the contractor is competent or not um, obviously when they are applied through normal supply chain processes it will be on the basis of the fact that they are capable to do work we know we don't have a policy where we appoint people that don't that are incapable of doing the work but obviously from what we have seen here it is very clear that um, a contractor any you know reasonable contractor would have taken proper measures to check the structure of the building and all that. So already there's a case to answer and we have talked to that. But what but about the resident engineer? Did he do his job? Yes, that's what we will check. And of course, if we find that uh, the resident engineer or any of our official has not done their part, we will take steps with immediate effect. The second yes, journalist we'll that I had noted, Yes, yes, you um, What are the, the repercussions of the contractor that is working on the roof? And is it safe now for the public to come to the hospital from now on? Uh, who's taking it? Wait, wait. Um, is it safe now for the public to come? And what are the repercussions of the that will be taken against the contractors that were working on, on, on the building? I'm sorry, just one last one. Um, will there be any compensation to those who are injured as well? Um, in terms of uh, hospital services, it's also our key uh, priority area of concern. Uh, Johannesburg Hospital, or Charlotte Matla, I guess uh, we have renamed it, is one of the biggest hospitals. Uh, and we cannot afford it not functioning. We have um, ascertained that uh, all other services are not uh, negatively affected and that uh, this is an entrance into the hospital. So obviously if there has been an incident like this, the, the site will be sealed uh, because uh, there's still, de still debris and uh, also for further investigation. And that is why I've said earlier on, uh, an alternative access uh, to the hospital will be made available. Uh, one of these alternative uh, uh, access areas is the casualty. Uh, we will plead with the public to really bear with us uh, during the, the time of uh, finalizing the investigation and also making uh, this site uh, 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 safe again. Uh, there will be signage that is put uh, to assist the public. The third journalist that I had noticed. Can I just, there's a part of the question that needs to be answered. Yes, and, and repercussions. Let me say that uh, when a contractor is found to have done work not in, not in a manner that's not consistent with how they should do their work, uh, shoddy work and all that. There are policies that we follow. One, they can be, be blacklisted and they are never allowed to do business ever again. And that, that we are going to look into. And secondly, of course, depending on further investigations, if there's any criminal liability, we will obviously take that action. Uh, we are not going to leave any stone unturned, I can assure you about that, and we are not going to blink on this matter. Anyone accountable, negligent, will take appropriate action to the end. So that's what we're going to do. At this point, if this contractor, we can see we're already removing them from site. So already we have taken concrete action. So if we have found they've done something wrong, they'll never do business with us uh, in future and with government in general. So that is one of the actions we'll take. With respect to compensation, um, we have got, as Premier had said, there are uh, uh, inspectors from the Department of Labor. And of course, those issues, once the facts and the reports are presented to us, and of course, working with the people that are affected, uh, government policy will take its course. Yes, I'm sure you, you, you do know that if, if it's the workers who are involved, there's workmen's compensation for the contractors. Any other person who, who will have got injured up to so far, uh, I haven't seen any compensable injury, but if, if it has to happen, it will follow the laws. You don't just get compensated because you were at the site of, of, of an accident. You get compensated because you sustain particular injuries which are compensable. But up to so far, I, we haven't seen any. But the workmen's compensation uh, 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 commissioner will assess the two workers, etc., etc. The third journalist at the back. 
No, no, I, there was the third journalist with the pen. Yeah, yeah, okay, just not that. Oh, oh, okay. Okay. Mr. Yom, from the Mail and Guardian. Are we seeing national and provincial government here because of life is city men? Because of what? Life is city men. And and just, actually, I we just, have three spheres yeah. of government. Yeah. Where um, is the where MMC? Is the MMC? <laughs> I did say in the earlier briefing that uh, the Jobek uh, Emergency yeah. Services was here and that uh, we've also enlisted uh, Ekuruleni Emergency Services um, uh, for their special equipment to help uh, stabilize. Uh, we do have uh, the three spheres uh, of government. Let, let me I, also answer for myself. I also want to answer for myself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure why you're asking that, that type of a question. We always, it's not for the first time that I come here when there's a problem. In 2010, six babies died here of Tlepsiela, and I was here immediately. There was no life is demanding. Today, I was coming from Cape Town. Just when I switched my phone on, I got a message from the DG that there's been a disaster here. I came straight from the airport. I rushed here because I can't sit and ask questions. They told me something has happened in a hospital, and I rushed. And I'm sure the premier will respond for himself. And the MMC, where is the MMC? He's coming. Yes, okay, because he's coming. Yeah, I asked him why he's here. He said no, he's, he's responsible for the safety and security of people in Gauteng and emergency services. In Johannes. So in yeah. Johannesburg, so not Gauteng. So anybody in a position of responsibility, when you hear that there has been something, you don't wait to be invited, you rush. And that's why we all rush yeah. in. So. I want to know why okay. you are here. I, I just want to say that um, I think when there is a, an emergency situation, we mobilize all the resources, the resources in our province, of our municipalities, all the capabilities. Uh, we mobilize them regardless of boundary to direct them to where there is uh, the situation that uh, we have here, an emergency. So I would like uh, to take the opportunity to thank our municipalities, the city of Epuruleni and the city of Johannesburg, emergency services, including the metropolis in both instances for working with our teams, including disaster management team, the departments of government that are here, and uh, our minister. When this occurred, the minister was in the flight, I was in the meeting. So they sent a meeting to, to me, the two MECs when they were here, sent a meeting to me, message. A, message, message. a message to me uh, in the meeting to say that uh, we have this situation, we are looking at it. Uh, the minister was in the flight, so we didn't even talk. Uh, we just understood that there is an, a serious uh, situation. Uh, even with me, Minister, it's not for the first time. When there is an emergency situation, we, we rush there. I, I want to say to you that to say that we, we have not learned from uh, SED many would not be a representation of the accurate picture. We, we work every day to say uh, the life SED many tragedy has taught us a lesson. Uh, that is important to say that uh, when there is an issue that requires us uh, to deal with it uh, in the most uh, uh, comprehensive way to pull all government resources, we have to do that. Uh, we have had an emergency in, in, the, in, the, in the situation of the collapse of the bridge on Greyston. Again, the provincial government, the city of Johannesburg, were there on the ground. MEC Vardy and the former mayor of Johannesburg had to leave whatever they were doing to rush to the scene of the accident. So that's something that we would like to do. We would like to be able to respond to these uh, situations much more promptly. Uh, and, and today we are happy that uh, uh, we are here. But we want to say to you that the work is still continuing uh, of the rescue teams. And uh, if there's anything that uh, by now we didn't know we will be able to inform uh, the people of our, our country and our province appropriately. And uh, thank you uh, from, from your side as the, as the media for informing our people about this situation. We still have a lot of work to do here. There was a question. We want to emphasize, if you check there, there's no other part of the hospital that has been affected. It's just that small passage where people walk through. And that's why even the, the, the concrete on top is not reinforced, it's very thin. 
because nobody is supposed to walk on top there. Any other part of the hospital is still functioning normally. And, and, and it's very important even for people up at home to know that this hospital is still functioning. The reason that the emergency services have been temporarily halted is because we have to deal with these images. Once in a few hours they found that this, they, they, everything has been cleared, the emergency area will also be open. But otherwise, any other part of the hospital is functioning normally. It has not been affected at all. I heard stories over the media that there was an ICU, what, what. There's nothing like that. Nothing like that. Thank you very much. Thank How you very much. How complex is the search and rescue? How complex is the operation inside? How complex? Well, they brought sniffer dogs. They've already sniffed three times as they removed the enough rubble. And the results were negative. They just want to make sure they've even gone through the CCTV cameras to check who was passing there during the accident and account for all the workers in the hospital. They've accounted for all of them, but they don't want to take chances. That's why they have to remove the rubble in an hour's time. I'm sure every rubble will have been removed, but up to so far, sniffer dogs, which are used for that job, have, have been negative. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Thank very, you very much, much guys. Thank we you will very continue much. to give you live feedback Thank you very much. And, and, and a continuous feed throughout the night and tomorrow morning. So if you have any inquiry, please make sure that you contact the EMS, contact our spokespersons. All of them will be available. Thank you.